Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. The Hamptons Film Festival is heartfelt and sincere and is more about artistic integrity. It's just wonderful being here. I'm just excited to be around these other wonderful actors and so much talent. I feel really fancy. I've never been before. I feel like they're going to find out I'm from Maine and kick me out. This is an important film festival because it gives us a chance to see the world through other people's eyes. Everyone said, oh, you're an overnight success. Well, I'd been acting for nine years. That was one long night. Please join me in welcoming back Maggie Gyllenhaal. Edward Norton. Rob Reiner. Mark Russell. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. Marty Scorsese and I did a surprise conversation on that very first year of the festival. This is about watching films the way they were meant to be. Every time you come to the festival in the fall, everybody has a good time. It's a great, great, great weekend for everybody. Welcome back, darlings. We're here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. We're sitting in the fabulous garden at the 1770 house. And of course, this is the 30th Hamptons International Film Festival. I'm here with one of the filmmakers, and she's going to introduce herself and tell us about her fabulous film. Yes. My name is Yvette Lucas. Uh, I'm the director of a film called Naked Gardens, which was shot at a nudist resort. Naked gardens sounds sexy. Well, everybody's naked in it, and we shot it naked too. You shot and you were naked too? Correct. Completely naked. Completely, yeah. Not even the glasses? I was wearing contacts. Okay. Yeah, and I was wearing Trying shoes. To... Shoes. Okay. Well, you gotta wear shoes, you know, after you don't wanna hurt your feet, you know what I mean? I agree with that. So tell my audience what inspired you to make this this fascinating film. You know, what inspired me was body positivity and also um, just changing the way bodies are presented on screen, um, allowing for all kinds of bodies to be presented and people who are taking auto autonomy over their bodies uh, to have a voice in this and we, it, there's no interviews, it's just like an experience, and my hope is that that experience makes everybody grow as people and more accepting of each other as not, we are. And not be so intimidated by our physical appearance because the human body, the human form is a beautiful thing. No matter how skinny or fat or anything about you, being human is being beautiful. Right. And I think shame has uh, made us have all kinds of traumatic experience with our bodies. And so having the opportunity to be with each other as we are in a non-sexual way is kind of amazing. It and, certainly is. And for me as a woman to have the opportunity to um, make this film without the male gaze that um, goes up and down our bodies uh, was also really wonderful on this film, yeah. And was it challenging to to make this film? I mean, you know. For sure. Tell us, is it because the people are intimidated when you're filming them if they are nude? No, uh, we spend a lot of time. My husband and I make the films together, and so that's why I would say we a lot. Patrick Bresnan and Yvette Lucas. Is, um, so we spend a lot of time with people before we shoot, and then we spend like months uh, filming with people. We don't do interviews, which means we're just with people all day long, um, and let real drama emerge because life is full of drama. And it certainly <laughs> is. There was drama at this festival. Oh my God. Every day there was some kind. Of drama going on. Trust me, I could tell, I could write a book about the drama that goes on here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. I think you should write that book. Yeah, one day I will, one day I will. But I people will buy always, it. but it, it, it is a challenge, life in general, just to get up, just to do the things that we do. You know, it every moment of our lives is really a challenge, and then we got to worry about the way we look too. Yeah, especially like if you have body issues, that's your body. So that's like your container to live in the world, right? Yes. And so you you gotta love it so that you can be happy. I love I love myself, yeah, as you could tell. I can tell you have fun. I have fun, and you yeah. know what? It's such a pity that people are 
intimidated by the way they look because most people don't see the flaw that the person thinks they have. That's true. That and is that, true. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sure you made this movie. Yeah, yeah. So like when you see all these bodies together, you realize like, you know, this person has this, but nobody's paying attention to that because everybody has something. Exactly. You know? So it's, 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 it's a beautiful ride, but it's also complicated, you know, and um, there are people in the resort that are there because they want to be nude. There are people who are there because it's cheap to live there. So we're all navigating real things in this. Where does this take place? This takes place in, where do you think? Where can you be naked all year round in the United States? In the United States. Mm -hmm. Florida. I was going to say Florida, but I wasn't <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun, it's a fun film. What's the name again? Naked Gardens. Why did you call it, na the, I understand the naked part, but why gardens? It sounds like very like Adam and Eve. True. It's, uh, it's based on the name of the resort. Yeah, the, the name is not Naked Gardens, but it's something with gardens, and it is like, it is, it feels like Eden there. It's beautiful. Um, what is the name of the resort? Na is it Sun, Naked? Sunsport Gardens. Sunsport Gardens. Yeah. Fabulous, yeah. fabulous. It's very nature oriented. Like a jungle? Is it like a jungle type atmosphere? Palm trees? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's I like the that. Florida Everglades. Yeah, so. I love that. Mm -hmm. And there, it's a family resort, so we we explore what it's like to live in a nudist lifestyle or naturist lifestyle with, with your family. So, How long did it take you to make this film? So we shot for maybe five months and then took like a couple years to finish it. Mm -hmm. A couple of years. Ago. Yeah, the so editing. Long. Yeah, well, ex especially when you make films like that, you know, Isn't like... Is it expensive to make this one? It should have been more expensive, but it was during... The editing was during COVID, so we had to slash our budgets. Everybody told me these stories about, everybody's telling me, because I yeah. do a lot of Zoom interviews, too, with filmmakers. Right, right. And every, because that's what I had to do. I couldn't do this. They wouldn't let me. I couldn't go anywhere to interview people. So I had to do everything Zoom. That's yeah, what that I did. correct. And you, we couldn't be that close either. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, but it was, I mean, we, like, the thing is, Patrick and I really rebel against all the standards and so if this film was a hard film to sell in terms of like people were scared of putting their money into a film where people are going to be nude all the time it's a full frontal nudity non-stop you know uh, except for the children we take care of the children um, but yeah but um, but we people were scared of like what where can this movie ever be you know exactly. <laughs> and actually it can be streaming like in a lot in any of the streamers so it's fine but right. um, but we said we're gonna make this film no matter what good for you yeah. good for you just like you're making your interviews no matter what right yeah I'm and I'm not I I'm not a cons I'm not person that conforms to society I do basically my own thing you know Correct. I mean I used to work if you can believe this I used to work in a corporate office and I just was not corporate I'm so glad you're not doing that anymore I hated it yeah. it wasn't me it's like severance did you ever see severance the no, TV show but one day I'm plugging it in I like it you are such a delight now you are too tell my audience did the film air yet no no, so this is, we premiered at Tribeca, and now we're screening here. We're going to screen in more festivals in the United States. We're also, we're also going to screen in Europe uh, in November. We're about to Can't announce. Maybe the Cannes Film Festival? No, not the Cannes Film Festival. That already passed, but I will announce I can't Sundance? Yes Sundance? Maybe? No, no, we premiered at Tribeca, so Tribeca. They're, very, they're very jealous with the premieres. It has to be, we have to choose one, and it was Tribeca. I used to do that too. I used to do Trump Becker also. It's uh, a good festival. It's very so good. fun, yeah. But this is better because I don't know, maybe Trump Becker is too, but it's a direct line consideration for Academy Award, which is yeah. very important. I mean, I say as a filmmaker myself who is 
uh, concerned with making films that are good, that say something about the cinematic language, that also say th profound things about people. I consider this festival to be very well curated and that every single film that's here is here because it's really good. And It is, yeah. it is. And then as an artist, you're like hanging out with other people who are making really good work and it just feels very inspiring. It's really a wonderful place to be. So, um, and then I get to be interviewed by you. Yes, darling, you get to be interviewed by me. Tell my audience, what is the website? Where can we go to learn more information about this? Yeah, you can go to our nakedgardens.com website or, or maybe nakedgardensfilm.com. And then our Instagram is Yvette Patrick, um, and it's Yvette with one T and E at the end. It's the Brazilian spelling, don't judge me. Yvette Patrick is our Instagram and you can see all of our films. We have made several films. We have a lot of shorts on Vimeo as well. Um, Everything is on Vimeo? All of my shorts, not not the features. The fe our pre our pre previous fe feature can be watched on Amazon. This is a feature documentary. This is a feature, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, darling, thank for you. talking to me here at Cognac Corner Magazine. Let's air kiss. Okay. Mwah. 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 And we'll be back with more interviews right here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Welcome back, darlings. We're here at the 30 Hamptons International Film Festival. We're right here in the gardens at the 1770 house and I'm here with this fabulous creature. She's gorgeous and she's going to talk about her film and she's going to introduce herself to the camera. Um, my name is Hazel McKibben and I'm the writer and director of She Always Wins. Which is she always wins. She always wins. I yeah. love it. She always wins. That's like me. I always win in my house. <laughs> always. Yeah, it's a short. It's playing in the narrative competition um, and we screened yesterday and yeah, just really happy to be here at the Hamptons Film Festival. Is this your first time in the Hamptons or have you been here before? I've been here before. I live in the city so and I have family out here actually. Um, it's, but it's gorgeous here, isn't so, it? Yeah, it's so lovely. It's my first time here with the film, which is, um, yeah, amazing. Really amazing. Tell my audience, what inspired you to make this film? Um, well, it's a film about power and shifting power dynamics in a relationship. And um, so it's based on a relationship that I had um, with someone who's much older than me. And um, it's takes place over a game of backgammon um, and as the game goes on uh, the dynamics of the couple shift and the power shifts and um, when he figures out that she let him win the game the relationship is sort of done. Really? Yeah that's his macho. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of about making yourself small because your partner needs to feel big. Isn't that something? So he was mad at her for doing that? Yeah, I think just um, realizing that um, maybe she was surpassing him in ways was not, um, he couldn't, he couldn't stand that, so, so, yeah. That's true of a lot of men. Now, let me ask you, what inspired you to make this film? I mean, why make a movie about this? Well, I thought I was, like I said, it's based on my own experience of this relationship and I feel like um, I wanted to figure out what those dynamics were and for me, film is, um, is the, way that I, the way that I do that and the way that I can figure out how I feel about it and, and um, by the time the film is made, it's sort of um, like a, I have a better understanding of what actually happened in the relationship and how it... Um, yeah, how it changed me and how it, um, what, I, what I learned from it, I guess. Is this a feature or is it a short? It's a short. Oh, it is yeah. a short, okay. A short, yeah. So, how many characters are in it? There are just three. It's, um, the woman is Stella, um, who we had Honor Swinton Byrne as the lead, um, and she was amazing. And then her sister, Lola, and then the boyfriend is called Luke. Fabulous. Was it long? Did it take a long time to make this short? Um, it took a long time in terms of the, I mean, we only filmed for three days, but it took probably a year to 
get it all together and arrange it, and we shot in northern Wales and Snowdonia um, on 35 millimeter. Why, why northern Wales? Well, I'm, f I'm British, and I grew up going to this part of Wales, um, and my family, like, ancestrally is from there, and it's also just a very beautiful, dramatic part of the world, um, cinematic, um, and we filmed on 35 millimeter. It is a beautiful place. I've never been there, but I see pictures, and I, I, a lot of movies are filmed in Wales. And I mean, that's where Richard Burton came from. I don't know if you know who he is. Oh yeah, yeah. You're kind of young, so a lot of people don't know who these movie stars are. But Richard Burton was uh, from Wales. Yeah, there. Are, I mean, there's so many amazing actors um, from the UK, and Honor is Scottish, um, and she came down to to Wales for the for the filming. And yeah, it was it, she was amazing. You are beautiful. Are, are you not an actress, though? No, I prefer to be behind the camera. <laughs> you need to be in front of the camera. You're stunningly beautiful. Are you kidding me? Thank you. A face like that, I would want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> No. Beautiful girl, you really are. Thank you so much. Gorgeous. Now, tell us where we could go to find out about this film. Do you guys have a website? Um, I have a I have a website where the where in for more information about the film is, and it's just my name, HazelMcKibben.com. Hazel, darling, tell us. Spell the la your last name. M C K I B B I N. And um, so it's Hazel McKibben. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Gorgeous. You are gorgeous. Let's air kiss. We'll be back with more celebrities, more films right here in the Hamptons, darlings. Keep watching. Pink champagne kisses. You know what might be fun? You should get the back gumball down. Sally, you can teach him. If you're interested in him. You know Mum and Dad will be dying to go in again tomorrow. Make a good first impression, etc. Okay. Sounds like fun. Well, the board is a bit awkward to bring down is the only thing. Oh, no, so I, maybe... I could carry it. We have a travel one. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go get it. Give me something. Are you nervous? Nervous about what? About meeting Mom and Dad. Oh. Didn't really think about it. Flying. Oh. I am doubles. I swear, you're rigging this thing. You're still winning. Still. What's this one? Oh, you can bet if you want to. It's just a bit complicated right now. Uh, you know I can do complicated. Can you? It's just more of a thing. Okay, well, you're gonna teach me. Might as well fucking do it properly. Let's swim. I can be done with this. I'm no. Done with it. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just getting the hang of it. Welcome back, darlings. We're here at the 30th Hamptons International Film Festival, right here at the 1770 House. And I'm here with a bunch of two guys that are filmmakers, and they're going to introduce themselves and talk about this film. Introduce yourself, darlings. Sure. All right. I'm Meredith Bragg. Uh, and I'm Austin Bragg, and we are the co-writers and co-directors of Pinball, The Man Who Saved the Game. Pinball, the man who saved the game. Sounds fascinating. Now tell us about, tell us the synopsis of this movie. Sure, so it's based on a true story of Roger Sharp who helped legalize pinball by proving that it was a game of skill and not chance. He did this by, he legalized it in New York City. He did this by um, playing pinball. Uh, in the city council chambers. And so that's the, the, the germ of the story, but it's actually a much larger story about what was happening around his life at the time. He uh, meets Ellen, who is a single mother, this and is like son. A, this is a period film, is it a it period? It is a period yes. film, yeah. And um, it stars uh, Mike Feist, Crystal Fink, or I'm sorry, Mike Feist, um, um, Crystal Reed, uh, Dennis Boutsikaris, lots of 
lots of great folks. And this is a, um, it's a feature, it's not a short, right? Correct. correct, it is a feature. We had our world premiere yesterday at the Hamptons. Fabulous, darling, fabulous. Now, what inspired you guys to make this film? I think we learned about the story and we saw that photo from 1976 of Roger with this giant mustache playing pinball in the city council chambers in front of a bunch of, you know, angry looking politicians and thought, what an interesting story uh, that maybe it would make a good short documentary or something to that effect. Meredith actually contacted Roger out of the blue and uh, got on the phone with him. And that phone call lasted how long? Uh, it was about three hours, because Roger's a talker and so am I. And we, um, oh, we... Oh, a doctor. Yeah, a talker. Talker. Oh, a talker. Yeah. I thought you said doctor. Our older brother's the doctor. That's, that's, true. that's, the, that's the successful one our parents can point to. Um, uh, so we, uh, we got on the, I got on the phone with Roger, and after that call, I either called Austin or I emailed her or texted it, I'm not sure, and said, I think this may be a feature. There was just so much else going on in his life, um, sort of a coming-of-age story around the time of the story that all the pinball folks know. Everyone who is a pinball fanatic knows the story of Roger Sharp. He's like, you know, Santa Claus in, in, that, in okay. that world. Now, you know, it's interesting about what you're, you're making this movie about pinball because I think that all the internet games that are on the internet now have, I think, started because of the pinball machines. Don't you agree? I mean, I think you can definitely draw a through line from pinball to the games that people play today. Yes. Absolutely. Um, you know, the arcades where you were pinball arcades and then started to get some video games coming into those, um, those, that world. And the people who play pinball would then start playing arcade games. And obviously, you know, that's the germ of what we're seeing today. Exactly. I think it's evolved. And, and, and now we, we have this whole source of gaming on the internet, which is pretty amazing. Now, was this a challenging film to make? I think any film is a challenge to make, right? Any film that gets made is its own little miracle. Mm -hmm. But for us to do a small budget period piece featuring a bunch of these machines that we had to source uh, from, you know, it takes place in the 70s, but the machines themselves had to be from the 50s, from the 60s, mm -hmm. some even earlier than that. Uh, was a difficult process in and of itself. And I got a, a, all all um, kudos to Roger Sharp. Roger Sharp, the real Roger Sharp, um, was an executive producer on this film and really helped reach out to the pinball community. Wow, too bad you couldn't get him to come to the festival. He is he here. Is. He is here. He, he helped do our Q&A yesterday. He will be at our screening today and do a Q&A. He's great. Well, yeah. that's fabulous that you guys got him to come. Because yeah. now, is this your first time showing a film or doing a film? I mean, have you done other films? We have done short films, um, but this is our first feature, and yesterday was the first time it was ever played in front of an audience. Oh, you must have been thrilled. Yeah, it's yeah. an exciting thing. It's all been pretty fantastic. We've had short films before that have done the festival circuit, but our most recent short um, was with the same producers, MPI Original Films. Um, but it actually had a very good festival run during COVID. So we had a good festival run through laptops and Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> it started out wanting this to be a short, but it was just too much material. So you decided to go all the way? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't know what it was. We just knew that it was an interesting story. And as I will occasionally do, um, I reached out to, to Roger just to see if he would get on the phone with me and talk so I could le learn a little bit more about what was going on. And then from that, I would decide if it's a project to pursue um, and what that project may look like. Ultimately, would it be a documentary? Would it be a short film? It turned out it was a feature. <laughs> Fabulous. Now, is there a trailer? There is not a public trailer, no. Uh, there are clips online, and you, if you go to, or a clip online, if you go to pinballfilm.com, that has all of our press material that is readily available. You do it, because I could take it down, and I could incorporate it into this film, into this can, interview. You can absolutely incorporate it. Like on Vimeo or YouTube? I believe so, and I can get you all that information. For sure. Fabulous. You guys are terrific. Tell my audience, where can we go? What is the website? pinballfilm.com it's where you can sign up um, all of our social is there and you can sign up for the email blasts that come out we have a number of other film festivals after the Hamptons 
and some of them have yet to be announced. So if you want the latest updates, pinballfilm.com. Pinballfilm.com. Yes. Terrific. And what about you? Can we follow you as on Instagram? Yes, you can. Uh, the Bragg Brothers. Spell it. T H E B R A G G Brothers. B R O T H E R S. It's the two of you together. Well, you guys are gorgeous. <laughs> We're sitting next to you. I don't think I don't think we compare. Nobody's looking at us. <laughs> no one's looking at us. Let's air kiss. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> State your name for the record, please. My name is Roger Sharp. So, who is paying for you to sit here and to testify? No one. Nobody's paying for anything. I think the biggest hurdle for most people is that they think that the ball is not controllable. And you're going in a certain line of action when the ball is down to the flip. That is scary. The idea of it being totally random takes away the fact that you can actually accomplish something that you've never accomplished before. I knew that at some point I was going to be asked to go over there and play that game. Pinball was based on skill, not on chance. We'll be back, darlings, with more interviews right here in the Hamptons. Keep watching. Pink Champagne Kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the Cognac Show. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing first dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.